Hi, I'm Kelly Ashton. I'm an educator for Handy Quilter, and we are in the Handy Quilter studio today, and we're gonna talk about the curved crosshatch template. I'm super excited about this ruler. Can you see it? We have a concave arc and a convex arc, which is so, I'm so excited about. I've been waiting and waiting for this inner curve for a while, so. I have stitched out some design ideas for you to see how different ways that we can use the curved crosshatch ruler. And I'm um, not sure how well you can see my white chalk lines, but I've just given myself a line across here. And then to use this in a border idea, you just want to have evenly spaced arcs. So on this particular one, I measured five inches across and maybe four inches down and just made a little I, I like to mark as little as possible, but sometimes you really just have to find a way that you can make some guidelines or some target points. So I used a little white pencil and just made a, a target point right there. Now, with this ruler, you do find that you have to hold it sometimes in an uncomfortable position. So it's really helpful to have the handy grip in place so that it stays there as you're adjusting your hands. So I'm gonna stitch around here and you can tell that I'm not holding it in the most comfortable position possible, but to use that outer curve, I have to hold it like that. Now, as I rotate it and do it here, I get to hold it in the easy, this is the easy street. I can hold it really easy right there. And I'm gonna go to my target point right there. I'm gonna move it and hold it over to this side and stitch it like that. Now I do have an inner curve, but they have a little bit different arc so I can't use the inner curve here and the outer curve here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the same arc on each side. So then I'm just going to finish that up. Now there are so many options of how you can echo or um, add more stitching lines to that first arc. And with this first line, I still use the outside arc. I just made a target point an inch away from the last one. Now anytime I have a target, I have to hold the ruler a fourth of an inch away from that target so that I can hit it. If I hold it right on the target, my stitch is a fourth of an inch away. So I'm gonna hold it right there and stitch to my target. Rotate the ruler. And when I rotate the ruler like this, I push stop on my machine. I'm not gonna, if, if I have it in cruise, it will sit there and pulsate if I have it in precision and I bump it, then I get stitches where I don't. So get used to pushing start and stop on your button or in your machine when you're using rulers. Okay, so now I'm gonna stitch across here. I'm just gonna echo, but I'm, I'm echoing it, but I'm echoing it at an angle because I'm bumping it so that it's an inch away at the point. And then on this third pass right here, what I did is I just echoed it a half an inch all the way around. I didn't give it an angle I just echoed a half an inch around those arcs all the way across. Now this last one's kind of a fun one. I actually switched and used the inside of the concave arc and I also had to make a little target point. I had to put it, um, sorry, I had to make it so that it was one inch away, one inch away from that right there. I wanted one inch gap right there. So I held this here stitched like that, turned it like this, turned it like that. There are so many arcs and ideas that you can use with an arc template. So when I was stitching this out, I was trying to think of different ways that you can use a ruler for a crosshatch. And um, I've put on the center of this ruler a little piece of tape that marks the center. So then on this first crosshatch design, I'm gonna draw a big plus sign with a pencil. Okay, so after I've drawn the plus line, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this vertical straight line right here, and I'm gonna line my tape, or the marking on the ruler, I'm gonna line it right up on that center vertical line. And I'm going to just stitch around it now I have to um, stitch, I'm gonna make a half inch grid, so I've gotta slide it down a half an inch. And when I do that, the line I'm using on my ruler is this etched line that's a fourth of an inch away from the edge of the ruler. So I'm looking at two things. I'm lining up the center vertical um, chalk line with the center of my ruler, 
And then I'm also looking at the etched line and my last stitched line. So I'm lining up those two things as I stitch my next pass with the, with the cross hatch. So I'm gonna slide it down. I'm so right-handed. Okay, and then I'm lining up the center line again, and I'm also lining up the etched line with my last stitch, and I'm gonna go across. So each time I make a pass, I'm lining up those two things, the center line and my last stitching seam with my etched line, okay? Does that make it clear? That's one way to do a cross hatch. Um, on this particular I, uh, design, I, I think that works well in circles and different shapes, but on this particular design, I wanted it more to kind of look like a cathedral window. So we did some different lines for that. And instead of having them straight up and down, I drew, I drew, oh, my English sister teacher would not like that word. I drew the X again, but I drew, I drew it at an angle. So I'm d using the same concept. I'm gonna come, let's see, I gotta make sure that I'm echoing. Okay, so if I, if I line the center line up on my angled line, I'm gonna stitch it like this. Move up a fourth of an inch, I'm still lining up my center line. And as I go across like that, it works out pretty well. Okay, and this one I just drew um, straight lines again, but I drew them at a little different angle. And on this one, I did not draw lines at all. What I did is I just held the ruler at the angle that I wanted the lines to be curved at. And so I stitched them straight up and straight back. Now I'm using a highly contrasting thread and it's often hard to follow a curved line to backtrack exactly right on a curved line. So because I was using such contrasting thread, I stitched to the point I wanted to stop. I didn't move my hand or the ruler and I stitched right back on the same ruler. And then I just advanced, lined up my, the only thing I'm lining up here is my last stitching line and the etched line on the ruler. And I'm stitching to the end and back straight back down. Now when I have a double line like that, it really makes my thread stand out and show up quite a bit more. So there's times that I want to see that and times that I don't. All right, so that's the curved cross hatch. There's so many different ways. There's just not one answer to how to do a curved or a cross hatch. You can rotate those designs or those straight lines in any direction so that you get a different angle to your cross hatch. All right, one of my favorite things to stitch is the continuous curve. So even if I have a four inch or five inch block like this, I think this is five inch, this ruler worked particularly well for this, this size and shape. So because you can see that when I stitched it out, I have a double line. It's because I stitched it the first time with the outer curve. And then the second time I stitched it, I stitched it with the inner curve. So I went around the continuous current, the, the block designs the first time and then went around it again with the inside curve. I get pretty excited when I have a quilt that has like a four patch or a nine patch or a 16 patch because I love some, some way of a continuous curve. So this is how the curved cross hatch works for me. I hope that you love the um, curved cross hatch ruler as much as I do. Um, when I was stitching the Dream Big panels, I really was looking for an inner curve that could help me kind of hold the ruler as I went around those petals and kind of helped make it really precise. We have one, woohoo. Have fun quilting with this ruler.